Sponge. How do you do, my fellow gamers? It's me, Chester. I'm back. How do you do? And I've got a new microphone. Yeah. And I'm just testing it out. Uh, I fucking love blue as a brand and so I got the opportunity to buy one of these for a little bit less than their typical selling price. So I was like, I'ma get it. It's kind of the same exact thing as my other microphone, but eh, eh, it'll be fun. Um, so I just wanted to talk about Cosmic Shake, the new SpongeBob game that I have not talked about in a year since it was announced. Um, I did a handful of videos, did some videos with riders, chatted about the game and all that type of stuff. And now I kind of went silent on it because I kind of stopped doing a lot of YouTube stuff around then because I've been doing uh, an audio drama series that I've been writing and acting in with a bunch of other people. And it's taken up most of my time and most of my energy. But I am incredibly excited and interested by this game way more than I thought I would be. And I haven't been covering it as much as Rehydrated, but that's because there are now more people doing that than when I first started. Because I was talking about SpongeBob SquarePants bubbling about rehydrated like five years before it came out. I'm gonna move that lamp, it's annoying me. I was talking about that game for like a long time. And so back then no one was really talking about any of the stuff or caring. And I was all, I was always covering like the rumors and all that type of stuff. Over the course of that game being announced and all that, heaps of like more channels popped up and started talking about it. So I kind of fell off because I was like, eh, other people have it kind of covered, and it's very presumptuous and self-obsessed to think, oh, they have to hear my opinion. Um, so I stopped doing the like week to week event event to, uh, new stuff because I feel like it's very uh, self-obsessed. But I did want to talk about this because there's now a big cluster of stuff and I am kind of, I've removed myself from a lot of like, I don't follow a lot of other SpongeBob YouTubers. So I don't hear people talking about this game and I kind of just wanted to talk about it for a bit. Let me be a bit self self obsessed, please. So one thing that's really changed with this game and is really quite exciting is they did a really bad job of advertising Rehydrated, I felt. They never really showed off the game in its best ways. Uh, like the the footage they used, all that type of stuff. Uh, they never the the advertisement to me was always very lackluster, and that's what led to me being very uh, concerned about the game, and I think r rightfully dubious towards it, as was kind of proven as the game's like a, a six out of ten, seven out of ten at best, um, seven out of ten on PC. But the trailers and advertisements for this game have been way better. Like they're not great. Some of the editing in these trailers aren't great, especially the sound editing and the way they stitch stuff together, but just the way they're showing off information is way better. The pace of stuff coming out is way better. Like, I, I don't know, it's just delivered a lot better, in my opinion, uh, than they did with Rehydrate. It really feels like both THQ Nordic, but also Purple Lamp are getting better at how they are pushing these SpongeBob games, because Rehydrate was entirely on nostalgia. That's how they advertised it. That was what that game was. It was about copying in on nostalgia. But that that's hard to advertise. <laughs> like you saw that trailer they released the, the day the game came out of like the family playing it on the couch. And I was like, what is this cringe shit? And so far this game's just been generally pretty good. They've kind of slowly been giving us bits and pieces and I've, I've enjoyed that, especially as I've been coming in after most of those trailers have come out. So I haven't been there like waiting. <laughs> When's it gonna be coming out? I can just watch through most of them now. So one thing is this game very clearly still has its roots very strongly in the heavy iron world and game style and gameplay systems and all that. Like this is, I, it's, I, it's a heavy iron game, but like people say that, but to be fair, heavy iron, while amazing games, uh, nothing they really did was anything out of the ordinary from typical 3D platformers. Like it, it was pretty standard stuff. So like, yes, it's very heavy iron, but it's also just every other 3D platformer. Um, but something that's really exciting is seeing Purple Lamp kind of spreading their wings a little bit. This is their second game. And you just, I'm feeling like a level of confidence from them this time that wasn't there, that wasn't there the first time, wasn't it? And we didn't have any confidence in them at all. And Rehydrated was a mixed bag and a lot of their additions were worse. Uh, the swinging uh, was, but it's really interesting to see them grow in their confidence and in their capability. And you're definitely seeing that through the advertisement and all that type of stuff. It's really interesting. But with that means second time, I am expecting a lot more from this game. I'm expecting 
a lot more polish. I'm expecting a lot better of an experience. I'm expecting better gameplay. I'm expecting better visuals. I'm expecting a lot more than I was before because it was their first time. And that's where a lot of the fear for a lot of people, and especially for me, came. I was like, oh, this is their first time making anything like this. You go onto their page, the only thing they had in there was some weird farming medieval game. And you're like, right, okay, these people are making SpongeBob. But now they've made a a decent to fairly good SpongeBob game, a fairly good remake. Now the bar has been set. And now they have to cross that bar. And the positive thing, and the thing that's making me quite excited, is just about every single thing I have seen has been going beyond that bar. Mainly the fog! There is finally less fog. I hated the fog in Rehydrate. I hate fog in any game when it's this close to my nose and I'm going down the sliding thing and I can't see the next few jumps because the fog is so bad. They've, it looks like they've improved that type of stuff a lot. We're on the PlayStation 4, all right? We're on the PlayStation 5. We don't need fog this close to my face. I understand the purpose of fog. I understand because video game worlds aren't limitless and they need to be able to hide stuff. I understand that it serves a purpose, but not when it's this close. So already, I'm, I'm pretty happy. Like that was a big thing of, big thing of why I dislike Rehydrated was just like you you talk up these visuals so much and I'm not a big fan of their visual style but you talk it up that's your core advertisement and then you smother it in fog it's like blech. um the other thing that's really exciting is just the level of creativity in themes we're seeing here we're seeing uh location ideas uh world themes from a whole range of kind of SpongeBob era stuff. I'm I'm a big defender of the latter seasons of SpongeBob. I'm a big defender, of like some of my favorite stuff is in seasons six, seven, and eight. Um, I love that, that, that style of awkward comedy that they got into of that stuff. There's a lot of like terrible episodes in that, but the amount of people that are like, oh, season one, two, and three, uh, and the movie, oh, uh, that's all, everything else, scumbob. Well, that, like there's the dumbest shit considering how awful new seasons of SpongeBob are. Shut up. Like, there are some great stuff in that. I'm enjoying, like, it's just a, a more expanded area of the SpongeBob canon we're kind of looking at here. Now, most of it is seasons one, two, and three, but like, but like the cowboy stuff is clearly inspired by like Pest of the West, and that's season five. It's a lot of that type of stuff, which is really exciting to me, seeing a wider thing, and it's getting out of that just nostalgia bait that SpongeBob is just so stuck in and so obsessed with, and especially people when they try to advertise anything SpongeBob based, it's so obsessed about being stuck in that like nostalgia bait thing. And it's like, just be proud of your show. Just be proud of the stuff you've made. Like, you don't need to just obsess over those few seasons. And I'm really glad that we're seeing some more creativity and some different picks from that type of stuff. It's really cool. And another thing, I like costumes. I've got some of my teeth. I like costumes. I like the idea of it. I think it's kind of cool. I always liked running around in costumes and all that type of stuff. I think it's pretty dope. I, rec I, rec I like the costumes. I also like that it feels like it's taking more cues from our main video about this, Creature from the Krusty Krab. One of my favorite SpongeBob games, one of the best SpongeBob games, and quite often just kind of ignored, because you can, ha <laughs> ha. The way of presenting the worlds and the kind of styling of the worlds and the music and all that type of stuff, I'm getting a lot of Creature from the Krusty Krab vibes and temperament as well, and it's really interesting, and like the, the amount of different gameplay stuff that we're looking at here, is it's feeling a lot more varied, and that was the biggest thing for me with Creature in the Krusty Krab, is just you're always getting hit with something new, and your gameplay style and all that, and a lot of people disliked that because everything felt shallow. To me, that was its core purpose, was you're in a dream world, every level something new, that's that type of thing. And I'm really interested to see how that goes, because I really like, yeah, again, it's that avoiding that whole nostalgia bait stuff, just drawing on some of your different material, drawing on some of your different sources. I really like that because they're good and they're worth drawing on. The other thing that is really cool is just the gameplay evolutions that are going on. You've got the slingshot stuff, which is gonna be really cool because you get like, you'll be able to see full vistas of the whole like levels as you're swinging over them. There's like a homing attack that looks like some Sonic the Hedgehog type of thing. That looks really cool because I feel like that will elevate combat into a faster, more like bam, 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 bam type of 
motion, especially if enemies have a bit more health, then you're kind of bouncing around a lot before you get into like normal combat stuff. Then there's this dodge, which is really cool. It's kind of like somersault dodge, which is really exciting because it kind of proposes the idea that combat might actually be a bit more in this, a bit more than the typical 3D platformer, like something that's actually a challenge, a source of gameplay and fun and like investment. Like that's really exciting because it's firstly is insinuating that you can die pretty easily, uh, that you need to dodge. You can't just jump into everything. You need to like be using all of your abilities. Whereas when rehydrate, you just brrrr, you're just spamming punch. It's like it's easy. That's all. That was all 3D platformers for the longest time. But then also we see in one of the trailers SpongeBob using that and then jumping from that. So it looks like it's also usable in platforming, which is really cool. I really like when they break up the typical double jump, like just that formula and giving us a little bit something else. For some reason, um, swinging still looks really wonky and exactly the same as it did in Battlefield Bottom uh, Rehydrated. And that's really weird because from everyone, I, I haven't watched many reviews, but just about every review I've seen and every like person who I've talked to about the game, they've always brought up how wonky and bad the swinging feels. So you didn't listen to that? I, like you don't have to, but, but why not? Like it's, it can't be that hard to fix. I don't know, it looks identical to in Rehydrated and it was abysmal in Rehydrated. It was terrible. And then there's the surfing power up, which is really interesting. And I'm really interested to see how they use that so that it's not entirely OP. Then there's throwable bubbles that stun. That's just like another really cool change to combat, which allows you to like, it just widens the battlefield in a lot of ways beyond what you can just hit right now. You can be kind of tactical of things like further away and all that. I really like that. I think it's really a cool change. And I'm really excited. Just changes to 3D platformer combat. Like, man, with the re like return of these games that we've been seeing over the past few years, the combat just hasn't really evolved in so many of them. I'm really excited to see how they do that because that could be their main way that they differentiate themselves from... Uh, Heavy Iron and Blitz and all that type of stuff. Also, horse riding and bowling, like uh, uh, yeah, running on the ball type of thing. That's really cool. Um, I'm interested to see how they make that different to just normal sliding. I don't know, but uh. um, the next thing is really cool soundtrack. I'm really excited to hear more of it. I'm really excited to just experience a new SpongeBob soundtrack. Like, like, when was the last time we got a new soundtrack for one of these games? Like, for the longest time, they've just been reusing, sp like, uh, music from the show and the movies or from previous games and all that. I'm really excited for a new soundtrack, for it to be in stereo and high quality and just to be able to put it on my headphones. And it's just, I'm so excited. The other thing, goddamn voice acting. I, like, I stopped playing. I stopped playing those racing games because they didn't have voice acting. And like, and I stopped playing the the Brawl game because it didn't have voice acting. I know they added it later. I don't know what they're doing with the, the kart games because I stopped caring. If you don't have the characters, if you don't have the personality, if you don't have the comedy, there is nothing to these games. They're just skins of everything else you can already play. Nickelodeon is its voice actors. It is that comedy, it is that. It doesn't matter what skin you put on it, it's the voice actors and it's their talent. And the fact that we are getting voice acting for this is just such a relief. Cause like, like they should have re-recorded some lines for Rehydrated. There should have been lines from day one in Brawl, the fighting game, whereas in the racing game, all of them, it is all that Nickelodeon is, is its voice actors. I'm very glad that they're here. Otherwise, we burn them down. Um, other thing, brand new enemies. That's really cool. Like, it's given me like, I'm not sure how many people will remember this, but uh, Nicktoon's uh, Globs of Doom, like the the style of them, the shape, all that type of stuff. I'm getting like major vibes from that. That was a that was a bad game, but I remember those enemies and I'm, I'm seeing some connection. I'm just glad that it's not robots again. But it's cool because like you've got the, the big guy, the bathtub, like I'm feeling like, you know, it's that change in combat and that 
perception of combat really which is so exciting the worlds once again seem quite boss focused which is good but i do hope that there are like mini bosses all that type of stuff and if you're dealing with large open areas it would be kind of cool if there are like mini bosses in specific areas that means like oh i know that guy's gonna be really difficult i'll go around i'll take the long way and i'll go around and it starts making you think it's like oh I'm really experienced with SpongeBob games and platformers and all that type of stuff, and I'm pretty good at this combat. Like, I'll just go and fight the boss now. But for someone who's less experienced, it's like, oh, I'll come back to that later when I've got this other ability or something like that. It just like, it, it would be so cool because then you could make the difficulty your own. You could decide when you challenge. It's like in Breath of the Wild. You could go straight away to the kingdom. Like you could just go straight away. And I really like that. I would love to see that. It would be really interesting. I know they're not going to, but it'd be interesting. And then we come to something else, which is Rehydrated was a rougher experience than I think anyone wanted. Like, at the end of the day, I know a lot of people loved it. A lot of people hated it. End of the day, it's like a 5 out of 10. It's, it's fine. Uh, or like a 6 out of 10, it's okay. Like, that's just the reality of it. It is a worse version of a better game and that's a big failing for it it's like its responsibility was to be the new best highest version of this game the version that we take forwards and every time i think about playing battle king bottom i go back and play the old one and i didn't play the game as a kid i have no nostalgia for the game i go back and play the old one i don't play the new one and like that's for me that's a big indictment on the game but overall it was fine it was okay. It was maybe even good, but it wasn't what it was. It was rougher than what people wanted, and I think that's what was still good about it was the fact that at its core, its DNA was still Heavy Iron. It was still a studio we trusted, and all the things that we kind of didn't like and weren't good enough was Purple Lamp, and so like a lot of people's concerns were still very valid at the end of the day but that's not entirely fair because the way they've translated things the way they've moved things over they also can take credit for most of the positives in the game as well i'm not a fan of the visuals some people are it's entirely stylistic you can take it or leave it but to a lot of people that's really positive change and the the move over of mechanics that's done by purple lamp like Purple Lamp did, you know, they made that game and it's okay. But what's really interesting is this changeover because Cosmic Shake is going to be the basis of how we see Purple Lamp in the future. Like Rehydrate, it was their first experience, it was their first time with it, and it was about being identical to what Heavy Iron was. So they didn't get many opportunities for their own expression, and where they did, it was kind of lacking in a lot of areas. This is fully their own, and it still has the DNA of Heavy Iron, but it is the basis of what we will perceive them as. It's like how Blitz Games is creature from the Crusty Crab. Heavy Iron is like the movie game and Balfour Key Bottom. And that's actually really exciting to me because I have more faith in them than I did before. Through the advertisement, through the paced out release of this, through the stuff we've seen, through Rehydrated. Rehydrated being the experience that was not great, but fine, fine to good. Like I have faith in Purple Lamp to do a better job than they did before and that takes it from being a okay to good experience to a great experience and then suddenly oh it's on the same footing as Creature from the Crusty Crab as Balfour King Bottom as the movie game because none of those games are perfect games they're great games and I feel like Purple Lamp is really on that threshold of being able to show off their DNA and their like groundwork for a game and to kind of reach that same echelon, reach that same height. And that's really exciting because it's it, like this, they have brought about the renaissance, the return of these era of Nickelodeon games. 
Uh, the success of that has brought on all this other stuff and really has given it a future that we haven't seen since like the PS2 days. And it's really exciting for kids and people growing up with SpongeBob now, like a whole new generation, that they actually have good games. They have these games that we used to have on the PlayStation 2 and GameCube and Wii and all that type of stuff. Like we experienced that. It's really exciting. And I'm quite confident in Purple Lamp to be the ones leading that, like Heavy Iron did. The main thing is it's a shame it's not coming to modern consoles, it's coming to last gen, but I mean, it's, it's a SpongeBob game, it's not gonna be visually amazing. But I am skeptical, but I'm very excited to give this game a go and to experience it. The main thing is Purple Lamp, THQ Nordic, I'm, I'm calling you out right now. I talked about your goddamn game before THQ Nordic was even a company, all right? Back when they were just Nordic Games or whatever, right? I was talking about that for years. I talked about your game. I gave you like hundreds of thousands of views on YouTube, all right? And you didn't give me a review copy. You, you didn't. I've never felt so betrayed. I've never felt so disappointed. I've never been quite as upset. I have been crying this whole time since Rehydrate Count. I have been crying and sneezing and moping and rolling on the floor this whole time. That's why I haven't been making videos. I have just... Fuck. I have been a broken, broken man. You didn't give me a review copy. It's time that you make it right. And you give me a damn review copy. I've already bought the game, all right? But just give me, I just want, I just want it. All right, just, just get, all right, just do the right thing, THQ and Purple Land. Just give, I've already bought the game once. I'll probably buy it a second time. So just give me a review copy because my videos take a long time to make, all right? And I want to make like an hour long video on uh, uh, Cosmic Shake when it comes out. It's going to be like a year after the game comes out if I don't get a review copy. Like, bruh, like, do the right thing. Do 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 the right thing for Chester. Do the right thing for your old pal. Um, I've supported you. I've been I've been your, your main boy um, for a long time now. So just, just 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 give me just, just give me the review copy. And how about how about everyone on this video? Just go on go onto their Twitter and say, hey, give Chester a review copy, you cowards. Um, and and uh, yeah, that'd be that'd be great. Um, other thing is, I'm involved in a charity event called uh, Cosmic Relief. Uh, is a charity event uh, with a bunch of other YouTubers. I believe it's set up by Zach Pack. Uh, it used to be run by Riders. Don't know how much he's involved in it now. A bunch of YouTubers, really exciting. Um, we've been in talks about it for like months and months and months. It's a charity event. Uh, we do it most years, uh, raising money for different uh, causes. Uh, it's really exciting. And uh, I will be doing some live streams for it. Uh, all that type of stuff will be announced. I'll be playing some PC games because that's my core gimmick. So uh, there'll be links down below. You can check it out. You can check out their Twitter and their all those different links. Try and support it if you can. There's merchandise and there's a giveaway where you can receive a bunch of codes for either rehydrated and also go into the running of winning some codes of Cosmic Shake, which would be very exciting. Uh, so, you know, uh, TQ, you know, go on, give me one of those codes. Give me one of those codes, man. God damn. Um, so yeah, you should check it out. I'll be doing some live streaming very soon. Uh, there'll be a bunch of different YouTubers. You can jump around for the different streams and all that. It's going to be a really fun time. Bye. Bye.